Welcome again to Wood Turning with Dick. Wood Turning with Dick. Wood Turning with Dick. Apple making time. I've made a few of these. What we have is a nice piece of lignum vitae. Lovely greens in it, a lovely grain. It's gonna be a very large apple, but it's all about the shape, about the stem, about the rose on the bottom. Do I need to tell you, find the center point, both sides, put between centers? Probably not, because you know, you've been wood turning long enough to know that. That'll do for a center point. Dig it in a little bit, nice and deep in there. And the other side, obviously. Now I know I'm making an apple, but still look at your wood. Let your wood talk to you. Cracks down this side, which I've shoved a load of super glue into. Because you can't see any cracks this end, I shall try and avoid this end, so my apple will be in this section. The sap wood, there's quite a lot of it on this side here. A lot of that will come off, but you can imagine in the side of the apple will be some of this white, which might not be a bad thing. Watch with interest. I'm gonna mount at this end. I'm gonna create a chuck grip in, in this side so I can then put it on the outboard motor. Cool. All right, all I'm gonna do now is rough turn this down round and square off the ends. I don't use a roughing gouge. I, I've, I've never got on with them, never liked them. I use a bowl gouge for so many things. That's one of these, you know, with the nice rounded edge. Crack on with that, speed up the video for you so you don't have to watch all the laborious cuttings and trimmings. Now, Lignum Vitae, it's a very hard wood. Nothing's impossible to turn. And people complain about, oh, wood being so hard to turn. Oh, it blunts my tools. Sharpen your tools. All right, that's the main end done. I'll square this off in a moment. But just to say, the chuck grip that's gonna be gripping on that, it's the largest one I've got for this lathe. And it's, I've made it as deep as possible because I'm gonna be turning this on the outboard motor. This is where it's worth looking at images of apples or get an apple that you roughly wanna make the shape of to work out what shape you're gonna try and achieve in the end. This particular one is gonna be more like a Golden Delicious, but a larger scale Golden Delicious. So let's get started. Stop boring you to death with talking. I want quite a deep hole. That's gonna be shaped, not like a bowl, but the other way, convex, I think is the word, yeah. Initially, you can dig it out like a bowl with bowl gouge. I'm using the same gouge. I'm just going to rough around the edges here to start to get the shape of the top of the apple. It is very hard, and it is a long way out from the chuck there, so I'm not going to put too much pressure on the cut, even though I've got a nice good grip on the bottom there. I might turn up the speed a bit in a minute, but quite frankly, it doesn't need it. Nice slow cuts, nice shallow cuts working towards the shape of the top of the apple. On the previous apples I made, out of the same wood here, Ligna Vitae, the very first one, I had one of those stems you can buy from um, you know, woodworking supply shops with a little leaf on it. Very pretty, it was gold colored. The second one I did was for a glass making friend of mine who wanted a hole in the side of it and was gonna make a glass stem for it. So I just drilled the, the appropriate holes for her for a worm coming out the side of the apple and she's gonna have a glass stem and leaf that she can make amazing skills. If you look at apples, they do go quite a long way down in. The angle gets quite steep. If you get this bit wrong, it just looks like a half-assed attempt at an apple. Forgive me for the swear word then, if you count that as a swear word. And there's a, a crack here. Once I've done some sanding, I'm gonna get a spot of super glue, any old CA glue, any thin stuff, doesn't have to be anything expensive, a bit of sawdust from the same wood. I'll show you the process in a minute. I'm gonna rub some super glue into it and, and then very quickly rub some sawdust in and super glue over the top of it, let that dry, not for very long at all, and then sand it off and you'll barely see this at all. So we're gonna be using a screw to hold the apple. When we turn it around to do the bottom of the apple and shape the bottom and finish and sand the bottom, we're gonna have the screw coming into the piece of wood here, 
um, it'd be coming through here. So you don't want it too long, but you want something reasonably sturdy. So I've opted for this one, which is slightly shorter than the apple, but a lot of that is gonna be taken up by uh, not only what's in the chuck, but the, the bottom here, which I'm not gonna be using. So it's only gonna come halfway down the apple, which will be perfect. So pick yourself a drill, slightly smaller, bearing in mind the stem is gonna sit in this hole as well. So it can't be too small a screw, otherwise you have a flimsy little bit of twig in there, which we don't necessarily want. Just gonna start digging down into this, getting the profile of the outside of the apple. You don't wanna trim this edge down too much. looking pretty good. I'm quite liking the shape at the top here. Yeah, liking that. Liking that a lot. A wee crack and I'm going to show you my method of doing it. You'll see numerous different wood turners. You have different methods of doing things but this is mine. Some super glue. CA glue. Just happened to have this left over from uh, another project. Uh, so what I'm going to do a thickish layer of glue all over. I'm just gonna press it and rub it into the wood. It gets right in that crack. It dries very quickly, super glue, once it gets into a, an area it wants to bond to. Next thing, pick up some of the dust you've, you've got from the sanding, rub that in so it gets into that crack. Rub it right into the crack. You can see the crack just there. And then, a bit more super glue on top of that. And gently rub over the top of that, smooth it out. So you haven't got too much to sand back later. A bit more dust on top of it, help it dry quicker. I've run out of dust now, so. I'm going to go and have some dinner. She likes sand of sealer. That's what I always use. And this is my favourite bit. I know it's not the finished article, but it gives a really clear indication. So I'm just doing the top of the apple. And look at that, I absolutely love it. Not too much, just enough to get all over in the grain. Had 10, 15 minutes, just gonna rub over with some wire wool, get any raised lumps of sand sealer off. I'll be hand finishing it before I put the wax on because this end is gonna butt up against another piece of wood. And if there's any slight scratches or marks on this top surface where it's touching the other wood, then that final hand sanding uh, with the grain just to get rid of any turning, very, very minute turning lines. Ligma Vitae will shine up beautifully, but then very quickly, no matter what wax, I think because of the amount of oils in the wood, no matter what wax you use, it's more a matte finish. But uh, that's Ligma Vitae. I'm going to cut down here and then do the final cut off with a saw so I can hold this rather than risk dropping it. I've never liked it, cutting them off and sort of holding it as you do and then accidentally dropping it and denting the wood, which is, um, yeah, not, not a pleasant experience. I'm just going to tidy this up, make it nice and smooth while it's still on the chuck. Gonna put the drill right the way through it. You'll see why in a mo. Giving that a quick sand just to make it nice and smooth because the apple's gonna be pressed up against that. And we're going straight back on there in a minute. Gonna put a countersink in this side just so the, the head of the screw will sit in there nice and neatly. 
I'm just going to come all the way through and hold our applet on. It matters not if it's perfectly round. You know when you turn a bowl round and if it's slightly off, then you can get a fatter rim one side and a thinner rim the other? With an apple like this, it matters not because what that will do, that'll add to the look of the apple. That crack that we found at the top, it runs all the way through the piece of wood. So again, with the glue, I've left a little nipple here for the flower. You'll see what I, I do with that later on uh, to make it a little bit more flower-like. 90% of people, when they see something, they pick it up and they turn it upside down to have a look underneath. So the finish on the bottom is just as important as the finish on the top. So to get that flower right, it's just an added extra. You know, it'll look particularly nice. So I do need to fill this crack though with a bit of super glue and a bit of dust as I did before. I've got a sharpened soldering iron been warming up. I'm going to burn this very oily wood. You can see the oil bubbling up as I do this. Press in nice and firm. Get a nice sort of blacky dark brown going on. And the opposite side. And the quarter. That looks quite good as a little flower. Next plan, having had a think about this, is to carve this complete white area out here into a bite. That first bite you get in an apple. You cut all of this white area out and then gild it. I showed this to the sander. I've sanded off some of the area that's gonna be part of the bite mark. Um, I've also sanded a small patch on the bottom so I can glue it to the base. Uh, it's going to be in a bell jar, so I'm going to make a base for it, put it in a bell jar, dremel this area out, make the stem. My partner's going to carve out the rest of the bite mark to make it as smooth as possible before she then gilds it. And voila, we'll have a piece called Forbidden Fruit, Adam and Eve's Demise, um, I don't know, something like that. Um, Lenore usually comes up with better names than I do. Um, I like Forbidden Fruit, but we'll see. So I went and found an apple so that I've got a stem to copy and look very closely at when I'm doing this. And there's another one. You'll see vary quite a lot. So I cut this on the bandsaw, just run it through a rough shape with a slight angle on it coming round. A stem done on a lathe, I don't think works. So I'm gonna attack it with a Dremel and this little ball. I haven't glued my stem in yet because I'm about to start attacking this to make a nice little bite mark using this. Try and get some nice little teeth marks in. Where it's been indoors in a light environment, the greens have really come to life in this. Absolutely stunning. Because of the gilding, because of that nice delicate stem, I'm gonna present this in a bell jar, which I just happen to have a nice, good quality bell jar laying around, as you do. I need a base for it, something nice and dark, I think. I was digging through my bog oak pile, as you do. Lovely piece here with an awful lot of cracks in it. It's got lots of nice natural edge on it, and actually that's gonna make a really nice natural edge bowl. So I'll do that on a separate video rather than use it for the base of this bell jar. Did, however, find another piece of bog oak where it's got some nice colouring in it. With the apple on top there, that's going to look really quite nice as a bell jar base. And it's just about the right size for what I need. 
Look at that. Almost perfect. Meant to be. Looking at the way this wood's dried, given the bell jar base should be fatter at the bottom and slightly thinner at the top, and this will be the top side. I don't particularly want to drill into this with the screw chuck, so block of wood on top. It's actually fairly evenly matched, so that should glue straight on there lovely. Just got to find the center. Okay, it's more towards the fatter end of the bog oak. That'll do nicely. So just got to glue that onto there, leave it overnight to dry, and then we can get on with turning it. Just mark up where my glue is going to be going, where I'm going to be clamping that piece of wood. Generous with the glue. Lovely jubbly, clamp that on. Still in line with the pencil marks. I love bog oak. Look at that. This being nearer the outside of the tree gets more of the dye from the peat in the peat bog. This being the center of the tree gets some black veins running through it as it comes through the waterways in the wood. My stamp would be here with the piece number 788 and three little feet, just a little 3M rubber feet on the, on the bottom, stop the bottom getting scratched up. But I need to finish it first. I'll come back when I'm sand and sealing it. My favorite bit. Just saying, I know you've heard it before, but you understand why. Look at that. So lovely and dark. Really getting that grain with a sand sealer. The light brown's coming to life. Not worried about the old crack at the side here. Semi-fossilized, 5,300 year old wood. Really does like to soak it up, the bog oak. Shame it's the bottom. Branding iron. Lovely. Piece number 788. 788, extra fine wire wall, and then wax. All right, there's my bell jar. Lovely. The apple has got an oval on the bottom of it where I've sanded that flat platform, and it measures three centimeters at the narrowest point. So I want a three centimeter little platform for the apple to sit on. So I'm gonna swoop it up like this, with just a little flat spot so the apple can glue onto the center middle. I have no idea if this is gonna look any good with the apple up on that center pedestal, but it's what I had in my head. It's what I thought would look good. So, you know, we'll see. You have to let me know what you think in the comments section below. I do love this bog oak though. Mixture of browns and blacks. Lovely.
Well, it's back from the Gilda and the big reveal. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. We have a gilded bite mark. I rather like that. So, my next job, I'm going to glue that in my stem in that I made with the Dremel to about there, just to cover any minor imperfections on the inside there. Uh, I'm gonna ensure there's some overspill of glue, of the wood glue uh, tight bond, original wood glue. Um, and I'm gonna sprinkle some dust on it because you know around the top of the apple you get that kind of dirt accumulation, I think from rain and dust and bark and whatever else. I think mean, I just add a little bit extra to it. Why not? Uh, but essentially, it's done. I'm gonna have the stem facing up like that. Get one final polish and run around with some 600 grit. Just get rid of any marks. Another coat of polish. And then a little bit of glue on there. We'll leave it for 24 hours. And put it in its bell jar. Ta-da! It's better without the bell jar, but I want to keep the dust off it, so it's ideal. Lovely.